See the grid starting now, those drivers getting onto the line, and we will be away very soon as this grid lights coming on on top of the gantry, and we begin round number 10 here at the Norris Ring. Green light shows, the cars are away, great start by Jack Keesley there, holding P1, of course the inside they're defending from the car of Tim Heidemann with a great launch as well. What can he do at first? the first corner here, what will we have happen? Cars bunching up tightly, bit of bumpers rubbing there. Keithley will hold the lead through turn one. Yeah, very, very close action at the start of the race. We've seen a lot of contact in the mid of the pack, uh, but Tim Heinemann lost his second position to Davide Toccatelli, but everyone is still running so far. They are indeed. Lots of bumper rubbing happening in that midfield, and a couple of cars sideways, but we believe they've saved it so far. Eric Werner dropping a few positions. He's down to P8. At the back, things juggling around somewhat as that's the car there of Jan Stanger going backwards. P11 now for him. Up at the front though, yes, it is in fact Jack Keithley. Your pole sitter will pull away in the front now. That gap opened up to over half a second between himself and David Tocicelli. Tim Heidemann's lost out majorly on that run, but he is so close to back of Tocicelli, we could realistically expect to pass fairly soon as the driver's already started that team. Yeah, but Tocacelli is putting Heinemann on the uh, worst line, so Heinemann has some problems to accelerate out of the turns. And Jack Keesley is going to benefit from it. Now, Tim Heinemann also went into the wall, so he's on the limit and above. I suspect several drivers, uh, in fact, several drivers did, in fact, hit that wall as they come to the final corner here already. This lap's so fast here. We're looking at roughly, as we said, a 46, 47 second lap. These drivers will complete. About 40 laps during this race. Uh, distance of 30 minutes, of course. We've got 28 minutes remaining on the clock. Lap number three now started. That lead expanding now for Jack Keithley. But uh, it's now over one second from Tocicelli to Heinemann. Heinemann definitely within DRS range, which now is enabled for these drivers. Jump down the field, Jamaka Fiducci, P4, Kamano, P5, Werner, P number six. Lots of juggling around towards the rear end of this field. We have the likes of uh, Tobias Olsen moving upwards now. He's P13 and looking for the car there of Pablo Lopez, who didn't start this race. So Pablo Lopez out already. No, he started. He's out. Turn one incident. Pablo Lopez will not continue this race. Not much room to put on his GoPro, Fabio. Yeah, which is sad. Uh, his GoPro records are always nice to watch, but uh, this is a very intensive racing league, so... Well, he was the first victim today. He was. Now have a good look back towards uh, Moritz Lorna right now. He's down in P number 10. Lorna in dense traffic as things stand. He's oh, we have car an accident. Of, uh, we do. We have an accident at the first backstretch. Tell us about it. That was uh, our Belgian, uh, George Durwada, who got spun. George Durwada turned around there, dropped back now, down in P14, so not a great start for him. Many seconds now behind him. Oh, Johan Jocelyn also involved. He's four seconds back from the pack. Now that's really hurt those drivers. Dirk Knatz and Nick Barknecht also down towards the rear end of your field. Those guys separating out somewhat, but really close here in the mid-pack. P number 7, 8, 9 and 10 involved in a real scrap here on the racetrack. And have a quick look at what's happening with Klaus Schutze. He is running as things stand in P number 8. Just managed to get past Denis Emelianko for that position. Those guys dogfighting heavily in that mid part of your field. Looking to the outside here. Inside as we approach the final corner. No, goes to the outside for a run off the corner. Can he get the undercut? He will get the undercut. Inside he goes. Emelianko getting past Schutze once again. Yeah, we are witnessing the fastest traffic jam in Nuremberg of this year. So uh, pretty, pretty intensive in the middle of the pack, as I've usual. been there, I would disagree. The traffic spin. can be pretty bad. We have another spin on the racetrack. Tim Heinemann. Tim Heinemann. Tim Heinemann. Oh, wow. Well, your points leader right now, Tim Heinemann, has been spun around. And that was contact, I believe, with Tocicelli. Heinemann now all the way down to P14, P15, he's dropping like a stone. Tim Heinemann is not in a good position. Yeah, and Jack Keithley's running away at the front, so this can be very important. Oh, Heinemann very slow. Heinemann incredibly slow. Potentially race-ending damage for him. 
no, he's getting back up to speed all of a sudden. I think he might have had a slowdown penalty after that incident to add insult to injury. No, that car looked incredibly slow there. Hey, yeah, he saw um, his wheel. It seems that he can't steer the way he wants. Yeah, serious suspension damage there for Tim Heidemann, your championship leader, which is going to hurt him massively. That car so far down on speed. Serious damage to its uh, suspension systems from that hit. So he's going to either retire that car or struggle around for last place points as he'll pull it into the pits. We're expecting to see a pit stop from him right now. We'll see what happens. Yeah, the first uh, yeah, ever retired. pit stop at SRTV and he's retired. So, well, that changes everything for the championship. So Jack Casley is in the position to really gain on Tim Heinemann. He was lacking 35 points before the race and now can close that gap to 10 points. He will indeed, and that would be a major relief for him, and he has to try as best as he can. Not only hold his position on the racetrack, but keep his internet together. He has to be crossing those fingers. Uh, the one man we've seen in the series who has the most internet connection issues, that is Jack Keithley, who apparently has potato for internet. But currently sitting at the front of your field, dominated qualifying with a 46.039. Currently still running 47 flats and hitting the 46s. Heathley really the class of field here, 1.8 seconds ahead of Toccacelli in P2. And that's an incredible run from Toccacelli and Fiducci behind him in P3. These guys really suiting the street course. Yeah, but the gaps between the drivers are bigger than I expected. So we already see, well, so with such a big distance from, uh, between all the drivers. We have one and a half seconds to Toccacelli, over three seconds to Fiducci. Again, almost four seconds to Camania, so, well, we might see some, uh, well, left cars uh, later in the race. We might as well, and I'm just watching now on board with uh, Jan Stange. He's right up behind Denis Emelianko there, and that's down for P number 9, P number 8 on the racetrack. Those cars in a big, big traffic jam, and as we mentioned earlier, probably not the fastest traffic jam in Nuremberg, but probably one of the months up there. On board with Stange right now, of course, looking at him looking towards that rear bumper there of Emelianko in front of him as they head down towards the well, main grandstands here and towards turn one here and that's the grinding curve that very slow excruciating hairpin for the drivers it feels terrible to be that sort of speed of course in these cars after going down such a long straight oh he spins it Jan Stange spins his car around he will lose that position and more Jan Stange are going to drop another position in fact that wasn't Stange that was Schulze now Schultz dropping now to P number 11, P12, and will Georges uh, Dervada get past? He will not. Schultz are getting that car going once again. That was terrible there for him. Just getting loose in the corner and getting tapped in the rear by that uh, machine of Banky. Uh, yeah, you're running 250 kilometers per hour at the end of the straight, and then you're slamming into the brakes and you hope that everything goes well but it's uh, so extreme for the tires to remain the grip and sometimes you just lock up your tires on the back of the car and then you spin. Exactly, looking at uh, another Eric spin. Oh, we have another spin. Tell us who it is. No, it's Emelianko. Yeah. Then it's Emelianko spinning that car and that is, uh, we believe, from the first corner again. That corner claiming so many victims here today. We had initial spins in the first lap and we've had it again but Emelianko losing positions once more, but having enough time actually behind him to really hold on to this. So, not lost a position, but really fallen back from Luna ahead of him. Yeah, probably the drivers uh, were going a bit too extreme on the setups. We have no fast corners around here, so um, I expect the drivers uh, to really build a low downfall setup and having a very loose back, and uh, I guess that's what's causing the problems at the airplanes today. Certainly will be doing, of course. These cars rear-wheel drive, so the ability to light at the back end so, so easy. And I think we might be seeing connection issues there for Moritz Lorna, and uh, with, he's involved in that battle there with Emily Enko. Good to see what's happening on track right now. Lorna being hunted now by the Audi of Emelianko coming up behind that Red Bull machine. Will he deploy his DRS? DRS is closed now as we hit the final corner. We will probably use it at the final one. Need to get a good exit from this corner. Great exit there for Emelianko. Do we see that flap opening? Not 
quite, I don't think he's quite within that window. He is inside the DRS window, not deploying it though. May have used that already on the run from turn one. Driving back there already, it's such a short lap here, don't forget. Gets a good run through that corner, right up towards the rear end. Would be a real way to deploy that DRS on this section. Yeah, you have to count on the uh, mistake by the driver ahead if you want to pass on the first back straight, because it's not possible to overtake him just by speed. Um, it really requires a mistake by the opponent. It does, in fact, he dropped back there, so not within that window. Looking towards the rear now, Jorges uh, Dervada. He is running in P number 14, but he's closing in on Johan Jocelyn. They are fighting over P13 on the racetrack. This field is frantic at the back as it is at the front. And Dervada do anything to get past that Audi ahead of him. Yeah, the closest battle at the track at the moment. Uh, we see a lot of uh, time between the drivers up front, especially Jack Kingsley and Davide Toccacelli are driving in their own league. Giamatti Fiducci already has a gap of more than 7 seconds to Toccacelli ahead. He does indeed, and looking back at that fight between Emelianko and Luna, those cars separated by only 3 tenths on the track. Can Emelianko get the exits he needs from these corners and catch up to the back of that Red Bull? He's right in his bumper now as we head from the final corner now, along the start finish line. The rear wing flap's still not opening on Emelianko's car, which is surprising at this stage of the race. Yeah, but he's in the draft, and now we have the mistake inside. by Luna, yeah. Yeah, Luna makes a mistake, and that gives the inside line there to Emelianko, but can he hold it? No, Luna will still have the inside for the S. Will he make another mistake? He won't. Emelianko having to sit back behind him there, grabbing a bit of uh, barrier there in the process. That will not help his car, as we've already seen from what happened to your championship leader, Tim Eineman. For anyone who missed that already, Tim Heinemann out after his spin and serious suspension damage on his car. Tim Heinemann not continuing in this race, of course. His Audi was retired about five laps ago. So, going to run through the positions as they stand. Jack Heathley leading this race by 1.4 seconds. And the Italian Davide Toccacelli behind him, seven seconds back from your lead two, Gianmarco Fiducci. P4, Domingo Camano and Eric Werner in P5. Benji Banki with a great run in P6. Jan Stango, P7. Moritz Lorna, P8. Dennis Emelianko, P9. That's a battle we've been watching. Tobias Olsen, P10. Klaus Schulze, P11. P12 is Denny Kramer. P13, Johan Jocelyn. Nick Barknett in P14. Jorges Dervada, P15. And Dirk Nats, the last car running in P16. So three cars lost so far in this race, those including Pablo Lopez and Tim Heinemann. It's been a fairly high attrition race here. Yeah, this track really has no space to let you do a mistake and that's what's costing some of the drivers. It is indeed and some of these lunges we're seeing, like you just saw Emelianko making quite a, a late lunge in the corner. He's pushing into that corner so much harder than the exit and of course the Luna is it's really costing him because he's diving in so late, he's losing that momentum through the corner, unable to carry the speed out, and Emelianko and Luna we see pulls away on the corner exit. Yeah, it's different on uh, every lap. I've watched uh, this battle for the past laps, and uh, sometimes Emelianko has the better exit um, out of turn two, but uh, Moritz Luna knows uh, which line he has to choose uh, to close uh, the chance for Emelianko to make the pass on turn three and four. Does and uh, have a quick look at Benji Banky right now. Oh no, we've got a car off. That is the machine of Eric Werner. He got into the barriers. That is off turn one exit. Spun the back of the car. Thanks for avoiding too much damage, but he will be passed by Tobias Olsen, the Swede there, in that number nine Red Bull machine. Getting passed, taking advantage, but Werner back up to speed and he will be all over the back of the Swedish car as we head up towards the final corner. Yeah, a bad race for the German drivers today. We lost uh, Tim Heinemann and now Eric Werner, who was the best placed German so far in the race, lost his fifth place. Uh, so not the best day for the German drivers here at the Norris Ring. He's not indeed. And you can see actually there on that shot from uh, Werner, that is the Grinding Towers. 
behind that corner, so they are naming that corner we see on the racetrack. Right now, of course, Werner will make that pass around the outside there of the car of Olsen. Making that look very easy. Olsen was giving him that position, knowing that Werner probably is faster than him, so that was largely uncontested. Looking back towards the front, it's still Keithley from Tokashelli, from Fiducci, from Kamano. So no mistakes really from your top four right now. Benji Banki taking advantage of Werner's mistake. He moves up to P number five, which is a great position for him. Jan Stanger up to P number six. So the attrition really paying off for some of those midfield drivers to score more points in this one and take positions away from their rivals. Werner up to P7. Emelianko P8, of course, due to Werner's spin. Emelianko really not as close as he has been. Cannot take advantage, but Nick Bachnecht down in P14 all over the back of Jocelyn. Yeah, you want Jocelyn uh, does seven. Oh, contact as he makes a pass there. That was a pass attempted by uh, Bachnecht, but Jocelyn pushing him wide, saying, you can't come through here, this is my corner, and uh, trading carbon fibre. Yeah, Justin has a difficult race today. He never really got up to speed, and now he has to defend about Nick Barknecht, who has his premier race in the series today. So, yeah, well, he was expecting something different for himself today, but he's trying to defend his 13th place now. He is indeed, and well, 13th place, not great, but still, not a bad run for him. As a driver that has finished towards the rear of the field somewhat, he's uh, solidly mid-pack for this one, which is a good thing for him, or will be points-wise at least so far. Emelianko closing up to the back of Luna once again. Emelianko been trying so hard to get past the uh, Red Bull machine of Luna. Cannot make it stick, though, having such a tough time. Jan Stanger sitting between them in P6. That's running in dead air for him at the moment, but Banky within 0.9 of a second of Domingo Kamano. We could see a change of position here. 4P number 5 and 4 on the racetrack. Yeah, but if your opponent has uh, the inside line on turn 1, it's uh, almost impossible to pass him. At least as long as your opponent does not make a mistake on the brakes. And we've seen that Domingo Kamania was able to defend his position then against Benzo Bacani, but he's well, he's holding close gap to Kamano, and uh, I expect to see another attack from him on the slap again. We will indeed, and we can see what Kamano can do to defend against that charging Audi behind him. The uh, Audi Sports machine of Banky. Can he make a pass here within two tenths of a second? That DRS was open there in the run down to that first corner, so big attack coming from Banky. What can do on the S is coming up now, turns three and four. All these drivers, can he make something stick? Will he try a late lunge? Not gonna happen there. We'll save it for the final corner or a run down the top finish straight. Really losing no speed. Sitting there in what we call the intimidator zone. He's right behind the car there of Kamano. Just sitting behind him, staying close, waiting for him to make a mistake and filling his mirrors, which can really distract the driver. Yeah, that's yeah. what you have to aim for, and we've seen that uh, Nick Barknecht finally was able to pass uh, Johan Jocelyn, and Tobias Olsen and Klaus Schulze are still battling very close. He was indeed, and DRS was wide open there for Bank. He cannot make it stick, though, in the corner. A bit of a wiggle there from Kamano, not able to get anything completed at the moment, but still trying so hard there to get that pass completed. Just not quite got the speed right now. P number five, though, a great run from him. Can he do anything at this moment? We just don't know. 11 minutes left on the play clock, so this race is two thirds complete. These drivers rapidly running around this circuit, just the laps blending into one as inside he goes. Banky got the inside there of Kamano out of the final corner, but loses momentum doing so, and the position goes back to Diego Kamano. Domingo Kamano, I apologize, he gets back through again. But DRS wide open there for Banky. Can he go up the inside? Will he lunge? He will think better of it. He tries. Up the inside in parallel. Can he get in front of him though for the S's? This is critical for his lap. He will get through. P4 for Venture Banky. 
Yeah, well done. Finally, he was patient enough to make the pass, as well as Klaus Schulz, who finally was able to pass Tobias Olsen for P10 at the last point in this race. He was indeed last position points there, for should say. And, well, if it wasn't for it, Werner, we'd have four Red Bull cars in a row, which is uh, becoming a regularity in this series. Of course, at the moment, we have P10, should say, Olsen, P11, and Kramer in P12, all running those Red Bull machines. Looking very, very nice in there. Blues and reds and yellows. So, of course, one's a BMW and two are Audis, but it doesn't really matter. These cars are all essentially the same. Really, the manufacturer badge is only providing a shell in the series for race it on a Sunday, sell it on a Monday abilities. These cars are spec to a large extent that there is a quality that is put down to the drivers, and we see that here in this series where. Of course, the cars are identical, the drivers and their setup is what makes a difference. And right now, Jack Keithley isn't making that difference. He is running. His last lap was a 46.045, six one thousandths of a second off his qualifying lap. Jack Keithley is running hard. He is not backing off, even now. No, he's in the zone. He is, uh, well, not sacrificing any speed. He just wants to win this thing and he wants to win it, uh, well, the way he likes it. He wants to dominate it and, well, that's really, that might be the turning point of the championship. Now that Tim Heinemann is out, he will not score any points and Jack Keesley is proving that he is a realistic championship contender. He will indeed, of course, we said he'll be within 10 points of Tim Heinemann's total after this race, if he stays where he is. And the implications there are incredible. If Heinemann has another incident or has a bad result, this can be Keithley taking the championship lead. This can him be him Check. taking the lead. Yeah, Keithley, but Keithley had an accident. A car spun in front of him and he ran into the car. So let's hope he has no big damage. We can only hope. And... His internet lot looking spectacular once again, so the commentator's curse could be a major problem here for Jack Keithley. The front right corner of that car looking bent up somewhat, but we'll have to see exactly what his times are like. The car not, perhaps, with the jumping around of his internet connection, not sure if his car is actually up to speed or not. We'll find out very soon what his next lap is on the scoreboard and be able to tell. But the gap not really reducing there to Tocicelli, so we can possibly imagine that his car is okay. Yeah, his gap is uh, stable to Tocicelli and also stable to Feducci. And, and we already see a 15 second gap between Feducci and Tocicelli. So, uh, well, that's almost a third of a lap here. And th that's amazing. Tocicelli and Keithley are really, really proving to be among the best on the sub racing scene. They are indeed, and while well, we have some battles kicking off again, look, it's P number 7, P number 8, it's Lorna and Domenienko again. Those two guys have been the highlight of this race, fighting so hard, but this time it is Lorna trying to take it to Emelianko. Can he pass that car ahead of him? What can he do to get past the Castrol Edge Audi of Emelianko? Is it possible? Emelianko running so well right now. And of course behind them, Eric Werner trying to catch up and make up for the mistake he made earlier on in this race. What has he got for these two? Will their fight be his advantage? It's always an advantage to see your opponents uh, being uh, caught up in the fight. But uh, on the other hand, uh, we've seen the drivers being able to run that hard, even if they are fighting each other. So it's not that big of an advantage, but now we see the attack. And it looks good for Emelianenko. Yeah, he's uh, uh, still on P7. He is indeed good exit there for uh, Emelianenko, managing to keep that car under control despite the pressure from behind by Lorna. Lorna not quite able to do anything about that one. But we also have Jan Stange making an attack now towards the car of Ingo Kamano in P5. So, can Jan Stange make something happen here? We see that uh, Bianchi, uh, Bianchi can move uh, on and put a gap on Dom Domingo Camaño, so he was a lot faster. But that proves that Domingo Camaño is really good at defending his position, because despite the advantage Bianchi has in speed, he was caught up uh, behind Camaño for a lot of laps. So will Jan Stenger be better at passing? That's what we have to see now. 
Oh, we have an incident on track, or it could be a connection problem for Jack Keithley, but Keithley's showing up in P number two right now. Which is a major... No, he's had more problems. I think he's had... Definitely has got damage now from that problem. We saw earlier, of course, with the lap car. He has dropped to P number two. David Tocacelli is ahead of him now, and that is actually on the racetrack. But they are in massive traffic right now. Yeah, that's what uh, Jack Keithley has to look for now. Traffic, that's his only chance to make the pass on David Tocacelli with his damaged car. Yeah, that car bouncing around a lot for Keithley, and he has definitely got damage. That is a major, major blow to Jack Keithley and his championship points. He is sitting in P number two now. I mean, I possibly that internet connection causing an issue for him as he gets, ooh, nearly got turned around there by the Red Bull machine who was passing. That was uh, Denny Kramer, we believe. But Keithley's connection bouncing into the walls. Not sure if that's actually making contact in the simulator or otherwise, but wow, Keithley's car not in great shape and we have a slow car on the racetrack. That is Tobias Olsen. He has dropped back now. Damage on that race car. He's going to pit road, we think. So, Jack Keithley's car in lap traffic causing some mayhem right now. Yeah, his connection is a real competition disadvantage for him, but it's also annoying for all the people trying to pass him because he's everywhere on the track right now. Oh, looks like he spun there on the racetrack. We couldn't quite make out what happened to his car. It turned right, then left, and right, then left, and right. But it's apparently going straight, so we'll have to take that one as uh, a lag issue. It's Jack Keithley not having a good race. That car, oh, it's backwards. No, he stopped. He's yeah, back going now, again. I'm, I have no idea what he's spun, doing. I guess he's spun at least. Yeah, um, very little idea what Jack Keithley is doing right now, but having lost six seconds to David Tocicelli, he is in real trouble of losing this position as well, as now only ten seconds ahead of Fiducci, and that gap is shrinking lap by lap. Can Gianmarco Fiducci see that? Can he push and make a position and climb that podium one more step? This will be a major advantage to him. And David Tocicelli, he won, running away now with only 2 minutes and 58 seconds remaining on the clock. Can this be the first win for David Tocicelli? Uh, second win, he also won round 5. But yeah, he's uh, in a good position to do that. Could be an amazing second chance for him there to get to that top step of the podium. Keithley must be heartbroken, of course. He was dominating his race by at least 4 seconds. Only now to lose out because of internet connection issues and, well, being caught by P3 and potentially P4. So that uh, could be a day of tragedy should he have another issue related to the connection. Clearly the connection having problems on his side as well, causing that car to bounce into walls and spin. So a major difficult car for him to drive. As things stand now, P3, Fiducci chasing down now. Keith Lee as he smells blood in the water. Benche Banki, P number 4, Mano has managed to pull away from Stange, but not quite those two still pretty close together. Lerner fallen back from Emelianko, so that battle is spread out somewhat, quite likely because of the uh, bouncing Keithley. Werner back in P number 9, recovering somewhat, but not a lot, as uh, we've lost another car, another car retired. That was Olsen, he's now gone, 15 cars remaining of your original 19 starters, so Olsen added to that retirement list. Last car running is Georges Devada. He is running last position right now, six seconds back from 14th position, that's Dirk Nats, Johan Jocelyn, P13, Denny Kramer, P12, and Nick Barknett, P11. That top 10 though, Pocicelli now your new race leader with one minute remaining on the clock, and the time completely blinking in and out, so positions updating I do apologise, that's his connection, not on our end, but Keithley blinking between second and third position. He is in P2, we believe, and this could be a terrible end for him, but it looks like we could be having issues as well for Fiducci, as other drivers have been scored in third. Well, it looks as uh, Takacelli's in the lead, that might be for sure, and Keithley is in second, and Fiducci in third, I think. That's the way it is right now, and well, we're on the final lap, I guess, maybe. We are now on the final lap, 34 seconds on the play clock, so this will run out before... Oh, 
that looked like Jack Keithley flipped. He's providing some very much needed entertainment in this series. Looking on board with David Tocicelli right now. Your race leader starts his final lap. Running now out of the Pillar S is running up towards the final corner. He might have to complete one more lap, depending on how long it takes him to get to the start or finish line. Ten seconds remaining on the clock. Will he make it to the line in time? Will he slow down? So he crosses that line. He will cross the line. And he will take the win here at oh no, last lap. We are completing that last lap, so we have to go again. He might have celebrated a little prematurely there, but one final lap now. As he crossed the line with a second to spare, David Toccacelli, a final lap of victory as he is 5.8 seconds ahead of Jack Heathley. Take a commanding victory which he inherited due largely to connection issues for the Englishman. But Keithley looking at holding on to that P number two right now. Gianmarco Fiducci will peak P3 barring any issues as they come around this final lap now run home and Tocicelli just lifting off somewhat he knows this is one lap he knows he has it completed and the point well the finishing positions are now up on your screen David Tocicelli comes home with the victory here today at the Norris ring in Nuremberg Jack Heathley limps home a peat number two but major points advantage in the championship for him over Tim Heinemann Gianmarco Fiducci P3 you know before Ben Banki, Domingo Camano P5 Jan Stange P6 Dennis Emelianko, P number 7. Moritz Lorna, P8. Eric Werner, P number 9. Last car in the points and in your top 10. Klaus Schulze. And outside the points tonight, Dennis, Denny Kramer, Johan Jocelyn, Dirk Natz, and Georges Devada. And, well, a number of cars not finishing, including your championship leader, Tim Heinemann. So, major upset today in the championship points. Not as many points as Keithley could have received, uh, Fabian, but a major major positive move for him yes but i think that he will see the seven points he lost and not the 18 points he gained on tim heinemann uh that might be very very costly seven points he lost today um after his connection issues and the contact he had it will be indeed and wow tim heinemann cursing his internet service provider here today and just well, still, the gap is closed now. We are separated by 17 points in your championship fight as things stand. So, Tim Heinemann is still leading the championship and Jack Heathley ever closer now in P number two. Well, Fabian, any closing thoughts on the race today? It was as close as we expected it to be. This track really offered some intensive racing. And uh, w we had seen some surprises. We've seen Tim Heinemann being out of the race, not scoring a single point. We've seen Jack Keithley putting on a very strong performance and dominating this race. But in the end, he was not able to finish it without damage to his car, without problems. So that's what he has to work on in case he has a chance to score 25 points on Tim Heinemann. He has to make sure to finish the race. He didn't do it today great race by Davide Toccacelli who won it so yeah well I look forward to next week as do I and of course next week we head outside of Germany and off to Moscow for round 11 of the championship join us next week same time on Monday nights here on LSR TV I've been Rachel Whiteford joining me has been Fabian Klot and of course Laura Lawson on the cameras see you next week goodbye